Hello everyone, my name is Anthony. Uh, I'm just going to get right into this. After hearing the Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast number 358, where Andreas goes off on Mo Levin and the North American Bitcoin Conference for not having enough women speakers, uh, I knew I had to speak about this at some point. And it just so happens that today I saw an article on Cointelegraph titled Women in Blockchain and Crypto, How to Tackle Gender Inequality, which reignited my interest to make this video. I'm not going to go into every single point that I have and argue everything. Uh, I'm just going to give a couple examples of why I think this isn't an accurate representation. So let me start by commenting on what Andreas said on the Let's Talk Bitcoin uh, podcast. Andreas opens this segment saying, On February 25th, the New York Times published an article called Women in Cryptocurrencies Push Back Against Blockchain Bros, which, perhaps, should have been headlined, Human Beings with a Conscience Push Back Against Blockchain Bros. So let me ask you this, Andreas. How exactly do women in cryptocurrency have a conscience? They seem to be actively attacking men and exaggerating stories about how they're treated unfairly in order to advance their careers and agendas. Let's talk about that North American Bitcoin conference, where the women in cryptocurrency spoke out about how unfair and sexist it was because there were only three women and 84 male speakers at the conference. Since more and more people are realizing that gender and race quotas are stupid, the women in cryptocurrency decided to attack Mo Levin with bad PR because they believed they weren't, there weren't enough female speakers. Well, guess what? Now, companies, organizations, and conferences who are afraid of the bad PR are hiring more women because they're afraid of the backlash. So, I guess they won. But how is this fair to men who have good ideas, good speeches, and good work ethic that are now going to be turned away from conferences and jobs because of this? And how is this fair to cryptocurrency as a whole? Because the whole cryptocurrency community is going to suffer if there's less people with good ideas and good work ethic and good integrity and all of that now not in the space because of this. You want to know what I think is fair? Meritocracy is fair. Letting people with good ideas and good arguments speak. And letting people who do the best work get the job. With that said, it doesn't really seem to me at all that women in cryptocurrency have such great consciences. Instead, they come off as extremely self-servant. Andreas goes on to say, speaking about the New York Times article, This was an article about the toxic environment in our industry that has discouraged and pushed out and punished and degraded thousands of women, perhaps even tens of thousands of women, who have made the mistake of trying to participate in the cryptocurrency space. First, it's extremely interesting that Andreas chooses to say, who have made the mistake of trying to participate. What exactly is a mistake for them to try? I don't understand why you choose that wording. Never is it a mistake for anyone to try anything. That's pretty discouraging wording if I do say so myself. To call someone's efforts a mistake? And really, there are thousands of women, perhaps even tens of thousands of women, who have left the space because of how men treated them? I hope you're real sure that that wasn't because of their lack of ability. Because what about all the others that get pushed out when they speak out about an ICO pump and dump? Andreas, I know you've been a part of these attacks too, and I've been a part of them as well. When you see an ICO that is so obviously a scam and obviously a pump and dump, and then you speak out about it, and then everyone else chimes in and calls you a scammer and says how you're wrong, it's extremely hard to stay involved when you feel like the whole world is against you like that. But anyway, back to women in cryptocurrency. I can think of a bunch of women who are involved in cryptocurrency that are valuable to this space and that have had positive receptions by men. Stephanie Murphy of Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast is valuable for her ability to connect with and explain cryptocurrency to less tech savvy people. Her ability to come to technical discussions with an attitude of, I don't understand, please explain more, is extremely valuable in pulling the answers from people she is speaking with, so herself and her viewers can understand better. That's incredibly valuable. Then there is Ming Chang, 
the former executive director of the Ethereum Foundation, who left because she did such a great job that she felt she wasn't needed anymore, not because men pushed her out. Her role was also filled by another woman, Aya Miyaguchi. Ming was an incredible asset to the Ethereum Foundation and to the community as a whole, and I especially enjoyed her work she did hosting and organizing uh, the DevCon conferences. The point I want to make is that these women earned my respect, and I'm sure the respect of many others, because of their hard work, integrity, and ability to do a good job. There is also Caitlin Long, who is a chairman and president of a blockchain company, Symbiont. She was also on the Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast, episode 361, and she was she's quoted as saying, I tried to donate some of that early Bitcoin that I had purchased to fund an endowment for female engineers at the University of Wyoming, which was my alma mater. At Symbiont, it was so hard to hire female engineers that there are just not very many, and those that are qualified tend to be able to, in many cases, command a premium in the market. So it's hard for startups to justify paying that premium. So I thought, well, I'm just going to try to be part of the solution and not the problem. So I very quietly decided to endow scholarships for women in cryptocurrency. And again, that's from episode 361 of the Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast. Surely, if there are so many women pushed away from this space, there wouldn't be any of the women that I mentioned already. Actually, there wouldn't be any women at all. Because they'd be too terrified to join, like you're saying. But perhaps Caitlin answered the question on why there were only 83 male speakers and 3 female speakers at the North American Bitcoin conference when she said it was too hard to hire female engineers and there are just not that many of them that are qualified. Maybe that's the answer right there, not sexism. I really just don't understand how everyone can jump to sexism and gender inequality as a conclusion to this. And I'm just unclear of where the validity of your statements come from, the validity of where any of the women in cryptocurrency statements come from. Also, I do want to bring up that Caitlin donated some of her bitcoins to a female exclusive endowment fund in the way which let her remain the advisor and free to choose where the funds went to. Caitlin didn't disclose how much bitcoin she donated, but Bitcoin Magazine said that typically donations to an endowment are $50,000 and up when they wrote about her endowment fund. So I did a quick Google search to see what scholarships and funding are available to encourage men to get into cryptocurrency, and I couldn't find a single one. There's nothing dedicated to just getting men involved and supporting men in cryptocurrency. But I'll tell you what I did find. There's the 99 Bitcoin scholarship, which gives a $1,500 per year scholarship without a requirement to tell them your gender at all. There's also the crypto scholarship program, which gives $1,000 per year, also without needing to tell anyone your gender. Then there's the $600 annual cryptocurrency scholarship, which doesn't ask to disclose your gender. And uh, also there's a $1,500 annual ReliableCoin.com Cryptocurrency Impact Scholarship, which again, doesn't ask for gender. And those are just the top four search results that I found. I'm sure there's many more cryptocurrency scholarships that are gender unbiased. And although those are low funded compared to Caitlin's female only endowment, it seems to me that there are already inclusive scholarships that women can participate in. But Caitlin's scholarship isn't the only female exclusive one. There's also Elizabeth Stark, who I'm not super familiar with, but I know she's the head of some Lightning Network stuff. She secured several female-only scholarships for the Programming Blockchain Seminar, and these scholarships are estimated to be around $4,000 each. Actually, they are $4,000 each. There's also the Collective Future Blockchain Inclusion and Diverse Pledge, the Consensus Scholarships, and the DC Blockchain Summit Scholarships, who are all exclusive to women and people of color. So with all that said, it seems to me there's way more support for women in cryptocurrency than there's ever been for males in cryptocurrency. It also seems to me that instead of men speaking out about this issue, they choose to put their heads down and work harder to try to overcome the advantages that aren't given to them. Which may lead men to being the ones who are discouraged and pushed out and punished and degraded. Anyway, I have more to say about this topic, but that's all I have time for in this video. 
If you would like to help support more videos like these from me, please like, subscribe, and share this video. Also, you can donate Bitcoin and Ethereum to the addresses both on screen and in the video description. Lastly, follow me on all social media. Take care, thank you, and goodbye.